What's going on, man? What's up? And welcome back to another video. In this video, we got what Earth was like before the dinosaurs. <laughs> if you want to watch this original video for yourself, it's going to be in the description. So make sure y'all check that out. And let's go ahead and get into this one. Years ago, Earth looked very different. Shit. Be before we even start, though, bruh, what, what do y'all think the Earth was like before dinosaurs and everything? Me personally, I like to think that, um, the earth was once ruled by monsters like before before there like before there was nothing there was monsters like have y'all ever heard that in like the beginning of like a, a show or anime or something that's that's what i think like what was going on before everything all the continents were fused into one teeming with life both beautiful and terrifying when you think of prehistoric times, you might picture a T-Rex rampaging through the jungle with its razor-sharp teeth. But even before the dinosaurs, there were other giant creatures ruling the Earth. Yeah, welcome to the Permian period. This epic started 300 million years ago. Back then, our planet had one supercontinent, Pangaea surrounded by a world ocean called Panthalassa. The Permian period began at the end of an ice age when temperatures were much cooler than today. Then, during early Permian days, Earth warmed to a lush environment with a diversity of plants and a rapid evolution of insect and animal life. Only, as you probably know, everything is ever-changing on our blue marble. Over the next 50 million years, Earth kept growing hotter and drier. Eventually, the most deadly event in the history of our planet wiped out nearly everything that ever lived here. Scientists call this event the Great Dying, and it was the most catastrophic mass extinction event the Earth has ever seen. So how do how do how do they know that? I, I know that they be saying like you know you can look at stuff and you can. It'll it'll tell you how old it is and stuff, but like how do how do they know that this happened to these animals at this time of the Earth? Like I get the simulations and all whatever whatever, but like at the end of the day, we just don't know for real. So like, what made y'all come up with this type of thing? And the Earth has seen five of them. Like the Earth could but be way older than we, we even know for real. This doom and gloom. Let me take you on an epic journey back in time. Here in the Permian period, some of the most incredible species that roamed our young planet are about to emerge. If you could time travel nearly 300 million years into the past, you'd land smack dab in the middle of the supercontinent Pangaea. Earth's smaller continents would have just finished colliding with each other to form this enormous landmass, taking up one third of the planet's surface. There was likely less oxygen in the air than there is now, but you still might be able to breathe. Oh, and bring a jacket because it would likely be chilly, with some areas averaging no more than a brisk four degrees Celsius. But don't worry, things will soon start heating up. By the end of the early Permian, the Ice Age was on its way out and Pangaea was becoming a lush world. Plants and animals started to thrive. This was a volcanic world. Violent eruptions changed the climate, shaped the landscape, and paved the way for evolution. When giant swamp forests began drying out, plant life had to adapt, and so, 290 million years ago, Earth saw the very first seed-bearing plants called gymnosperms. These plants carried seeds on their cones and they spread across the supercontinent like wildfire. The ancient evergreen forest of the early Permian was hiding something familiar. Just like today, you could find cicadas and beetles piercing and sucking on the plants and the cutest of them all, cockroaches. Mm. Only, these weren't the cockroaches you know today. These prehistoric vermin were gigantic. So I'm saying are like, are cockroaches like the apex, like, animal of the world yet? Because like, 
they damn near can survive anything. They, they've been alive damn near longer than anything else has been alive. So like our cockroach is like really like, they're like, they're like, I don't know what to call them. They're like the Titans of this planet. It's like they've been here from damn near the beginning and never left. I don't know, bro. Gigantic, it, the size of birds. Like they've but been alive for so long. Despite their size, right. cockroaches never ruled prehistoric land, and that's good news, am I right? No, something much more fascinating was roaming Pangaea. They rule from behind the, the scenes, now extinct bro. ancestor of primitive mammals, Dimetrodon. This animal was as fascinating as it was terrifying. Encountering a Dimetrodon would be quite a sight to behold. This ancient lizard grew to five meters long and weighed 225 kilograms. Mm, it had a large sail running down its spine. System. Scientists think this sail helped the reptile regulate its body temperature, soaking up warmth during the daytime and dissipating excess heat during the cooler nights. It would walk toward you like a crocodile and act like a total menace. Dimetrodon was an apex predator of its time. Watch out for a mix of sharp and flat teeth that would slice you open and grind you up. In the Middle Permian period, other mammal-like reptiles took over the planet, therapsids. They had strong jaws with sharp teeth and a somewhat upright stance thanks to their legs being situated underneath their bodies. Therapsid reptiles varied from the five meter long, likely omnivorous Deuterosaurus to the five times smaller meat eating Lycanops. You could meet plenty more therapsids if you stuck around for another 20 million years. During the Middle Permian period, Earth kept getting hotter. The average global temperature on Pangaea grew to about 25 degrees Celsius. Like, how do they and know that? Volcanoes were, they there were spitting the temperature? greenhouse gases out into the atmosphere. Due to the changing climate, sea levels were shifting, but marine life found ways to thrive. If you were to take a dip in the prehistoric super ocean, you'd be swimming alongside ancient sharks and bony primitive fish. Many more complex marine species came and went as the environment kept changing. Oh, that's what that's a better thing to say. Are, are, are cockroaches the last primitive species on Earth type of thing? That's, that's, that's a better thing to ask. In the late Permian period, you could have a friendly encounter with another reptile, Lystrosaurus. These looked like a cross between a lizard and a pig, but unlike all the scary prehistoric monsters out there, Lystrosaurus was a herbivore. It was just one meter long and had powerful front legs for burrowing. Soon, another cute mammal-like lizard evolved, the Cynodont. The Cynodont looked like a giant rodent. It was about one meter long, had whiskers, and fed on small animals and insects. Now, during this time, something bad was brewing in the air. A large amount of volcanic activity was displacing oxygen from the atmosphere. Scientists think there was as little as 10% oxygen in the air. Compare that to 21% today. You'd have a hard time breathing in that environment. And the temperature kept rising and rising. With an average temperature of about 28 degrees Celsius, this lush prehistoric world was turning into an oven. All good things must come to an end, and sadly, this period came to a particularly brutal one. About 252 million years ago, about 90% of all plant and animal life was wiped out. This tragic moment is called the Great Dying, and it was Earth's most devastating mass extinction event. Scientists still know? debate what caused this catastrophic extinction. Most theories suggest it was the result of explosive volcanic activity. As sea life, to me, eruptions that doesn't make sense. Like that doesn't that doesn't really make sense. Like how do you like 
they know that bit happened, but they don't know how it happened. Like they know at one point the earth, the earth killed a whole bunch of shit and had a mass extinction, but they don't know how. Like how do you how do you know? Like how do you know that happened if you don't know how it happened? You get me? It would be different if you saw it and you couldn't make sense of it. But how do you know something happened in the past if you don't know how it happened in the past? You feel me? Continent, massive amounts of ash were unleashed into the atmosphere. So much ash that it blocked out most, if not all, of the incoming sunlight. And with no sunlight, global temperatures These are just theories, suddenly. man. They don't know what happened for real. Plants couldn't perform know their this photosynthetic processes and died off. And without plants, the very basis of their food chain, animals soon followed. Things got worse before they got better. Because of all the carbon dioxide emitted during the volcanic eruptions, global temperatures rose again. And not just to where they were, but higher. You know, sea creatures are probably just chilling. And, and, and this caused this is going the on. super ocean to lose most of its oxygen. Oh, never and mind. Unable to breathe, a majority of the Permian sea animals perished. Never mind, my bad. Eventually, over 95% of marine species and more than 70% of land animals became extinct. This mass extinction event could make you sad enough to want to bring back all the animals. Well, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me and it sounds stupid. I don't like to think that this is what happened before the dinosaurs, but y'all can think that because science, I guess, supports it and y'all science lovers can have that. But that's it for this one. I hope that y'all enjoy it. If y'all did, leave a little like, comment, subscribe, share, turn the post notification bells on, and peace, love, and positivity, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. It's two options in this world. Is you gonna win or lose? Is you gonna take the risk or not? You know you gotta choose. Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos.